Hey guys, it is Cam with Craft and Tailored. In this episode of What is on My Wrist, we're talking about a transitional Rolex Submariner reference. The reference is 168000, AKA the triple zero, three zeros. That's what triple means, it's three zeros. This is a really cool watch. Um, we have one that is full set and it's a really nice, honest example. The case is really clean and it kind of had all of its accoutrement. Very rare reference, but kind of seemingly under the radar-ish. Also really cool because I think it's kind of within like this Neo Vintage, if you want to call it that. You guys can argue what Neo Vintage means and all that kind of stuff, but it's this transitional period for Rolex and we had a really cool one and I wanted to talk a little bit about the 16-8000 series since we had a good one. So before we dive into the details, do us a favor guys, hit the like and subscribe button. That really helps us out. Um, we're trying to grow the channel so that we can continue to provide you guys with this amazing and awesome content. The Rolex 16800 is pretty much the same watch as a Rolex 16800. The biggest difference is that within the reference, you have an extra zero, but the Rolex 16800 is the first Rolex to use the upgraded 904L stainless steel. Before the 16800, Rolex was using 316L stainless steel and in 1987-1988, Rolex basically made a shift from 316L to 904L, which is basically the same stainless steel that Rolex uses today in their modern steel production watches. So basically in 1987, moving into 1988, for about seven to nine months, the Rolex 16800 was replaced by the 16800 series and then that was produced for about seven to nine months and then the 16610 kind of took over that. So really cool watch, um, very much kind of in the middle of two references, a really uh, kind of classic and timeless sub, but with that extra hit of like coolness. This specific example is really cool and I like 16800, 16800s and early 16610s because you kind of get the best of both worlds on wrist, it kind of reminds me of an 80s era sub, which I guess is now vintage. I'm vintage, I was born in 85, and at the time of recording this, I'm now 36, uh, which means that I'm probably vintage, which is a weird thing to think about. These subs, I think, have a lot of value, but I think the market is really taking notice of kind of these 80s era subs with the glossy dial, white gold surrounds, and a lot of dealers and customers have now started to call them T dials. Not T for Tiffany, but T for Tritium. So what will normally happen is these dials have the ability to develop a patina that you don't really see in the later 90s and thousands era watches when Tritium was discontinued and Rolex was kind of trying to make watches that would better withstand the test of time. And I think that the 68000 is a good reference point for that because Rolex realized that 904L steel was better than 316L. It was actually a, a much more durable steel that was even more anti-corrosive as stainless steel. So kind of a nice nod to you know them kind of modifying things, even the materials in which watches were made from to better uh, withstand the test of time. But let's talk about this watch specifically. It's on a 93150 bracelet, one of my favorite sub bracelets of all time. The one thing is this has 593 end pieces, which is kind of unique and cool because instead of having a 501 end piece or a 580, the 593 is kind of specific to the 168000, so the triple zero. The watch doesn't really wear any differently outside of like a 16610 or 16800. There's no real noticeable difference. But one thing that I have noticed about the later 16800s and the triple zeros is the dial typically has a tendency to kind of take on like this like cool like patina. I've noticed it more often than not in those watches as opposed to like the later 16610s. I don't know if it was a defect in lacquer, but this one has kind of almost like this frozen look, if, if that's what you want to call it. There's kind of this even and consistent patina on the surface of the glossy portion of the dial, which makes it a really interesting piece, but also very functional. You know, upgraded triple lock crown, sapphire crystal, thousand foot, 300 meter depth rating, unidirectional click, bezel, right? So that's kind of a nice modern feature of the piece, very wearable piece. This specific example 
is from 88, uh, based on the cereal, and has a really nice, sharp, unpolished case. You can see the chamfers nicely in the lugs, the bezel's still pretty you know, sharp. Um, it does show wear, the bracelet shows uh, maybe a little bit of stretch, but it's kind of a nice survivor. The other thing that's really cool is that the box also says 16800, not 16800, which was really common. Rolex recognized the reference internally as having that extra zero, notating the uh, use of uh, the upgraded stainless steel moving on from the 316L. But um, even on like the paperwork and stuff, what's what's really cool is that if original, they won't say 16,800, they'll just have a 16,800 designation. This watch specifically comes with its original uh, warranty paperwork, um, its original inner and outer boxes, and then, you know, its anchor and its uh, chrono wax seal, along with the original polishing cloth, which was cool, and then, uh, you know, the the inner booklets, which is really cool. So kind of the survivor of an example, I wanted to just kind of share it with you to talk a little bit about the difference between, you know, a 16800 and a 16610 um, and very cool reference that is uh, collectible um, for being kind of a, a transitional piece. So thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and of course, subscribe. That really helps us out. If you've got watch questions, drop us a line at info at craftandtailored.com. And if you're not doing so already, follow us on Instagram at craftandtailored. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Three zeros. That's what triple means.